early morning day 5 biopsy evaluation. All three BB or better blastocysts are biopsied, emphasis to any with trophoblast extrusion. We use a large bore holder and small diameter biopsy pipette. At the biopsy, the embryo is secured with the trophoblast extrusion at the 3 o'clock position. Gentle suction then holds the trophoblast cells inside the biopsy pipette. The first laser pulse is at one cell junction away from the biopsy pipette, with minimal pulses recommended. Embryos are then placed in a GPS culture dish. Here is an example of our technique. The blastocyst is held with the trophoblast at the 3 o'clock position. The embryo is then oriented around the laser objective, with the first pulse at the first cell junction away from the biopsy pipette. Two more pulses and gentle suction results in a small mass of trophectoderm cells. The resultant trophoblast cell mass is small, preferably less than 10 cells, with all cellular material sent for analysis. Adherent trophoblast cells to the biopsy pipette is alleviated by pre-coating the pipette with a central serum drop. When compared to day 3 blastomeres, trophoblast cells are more fragile and may become transparent in the wash buffer, all resulting in high amplification. An ideal trophoblast cell mass. Here are some examples of our blastocyst biopsy. We begin with a 3AB biopsy. This is the earliest blastocyst stage we will biopsy. The trophectoderm is aspirated into the biopsy pipette, two laser pulses administered, and a small mass of trophectoderm cells results. A 4AA biopsy. Note, the focus is on the trophoblast cells, not the zona pellucida. A small diameter biopsy pipette is used, and gentle suction aspirates the trophectoderm cells. The laser is applied at one cell junction away from the biopsy pipette. Manual pulling and three laser pulses results in a small trophectoderm mass. A 5AA biopsy. Note the ICM is half in and out of the zona pellucida. The first laser pulse is at one cell junction away from the biopsy pipette. Gentle pulling stretches the cell junctions and 10 laser pulses results in an ideal trophectoderm cell mass. A 5AB biopsy. Again, the focus is on the trophectoderm cells, not the zona pellucida. Gentle suction pulls in a small piece of trophectoderm cells. The first laser pulse is at one cell junction from the biopsy pipette. Blastocyl collapse aids the biopsy in allowing the trophectoderm cells to flow into the biopsy pipette easily. Five laser pulses and gentle pulling results in an ideal trophectoderm cell mass. A 6AA biopsy. Fully hatched blastocysts are held with gentle suction on the holding pipette. The biopsy must be performed quickly as blastocyl collapse makes cell junction visualization difficult. The first laser pulse results in blastocyl collapse. Gentle suction, manual pulling, and 11 laser pulses results in an ideal trophectoderm cell mass. Note, the fibrous strand is alleviated through manual pulling and not excess laser pulses. Let's explore some troubleshooting. Potential problems. Trophectoderm cells are sticky and fibrous. 
strands are hard to laser and need manual pulling. ICM location is problematic. Sticky and fibrous strands do not repeatedly laser in one location resulting in a fibrous strand. Rather use suction and manual pulling to release the sample. A central serum drop coats the biopsy pipette between embryos to alleviate stickiness. A troubleshooting example of fibrous strands. Note the strand connecting the biopsy sample to the embryo. No laser pulses are administered, rather manual pulling releases the sample. We grade the ICM location. A grade I indicates the ICM is inside the zona, 86% of blast biopsied. O indicates the ICM is outside the zona, 8% of biopsy blasts. A grade P indicates the ICM location is problematic. 6% of biopsy blasts. In these situations, we pull the trophoblast until the junction is away from the ICM or we create a new opening. A troubleshooting example, ICM location grade P. Note, the trophectoderm is pulled away from the ICM to allow the first laser pulse. In this example, a small piece of trophectoderm is released, leaving a second piece behind. The second piece is easily biopsied and both sent for array analysis. All euploid blasts continue development to day 6 with high clinical pregnancy rates. Fully hatched grade 6 blastocysts are easily transferred or vitrified using the microsecure vitrification. The biopsy technique appears to not harm development. Special thanks to Genesis Genetics and to all colleagues who have helped us optimize 